What's up guys? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh exclusive. If you've clicked on this video, then I assume that the Dior Sauvage bug has bitten you. Maybe you don't know about it yet, and if not, then I'm happy you chose to come to me to hear about it. <laughs> if you didn't already know, this particular fragrance from Dior uh, was released in September of 2015 and was highly anticipated and frankly let a lot of people down in the fragrance community. Now, the fragrance community means those of us who we would deem ourselves as frag heads, uh, collectors of sorts, but Dior knew what they were doing. They were not aiming this towards a niche of people. That's what frag heads are. It's kind of ironic when you think about it. Those who have really dedicated themselves to the artistry of perfumery are the ones that were not being catered to with this particular fragrance. This fragrance was intended for the masses. This was a mass appealing fragrance and it did its job. It's still doing its job. When I got my nose on this fragrance, it was at Macy's. I had heard so much about it. Uh, I had heard two conflicting things that number one, it was terrible and there was no depth to it. On the other hand, I heard that it was just something that smelled really good and that was very simple and that was going to be pleasant to just about anybody if they caught a whiff of it in the air. So I smelled it. My initial reaction was, oh, okay, that's cool. This was at the beginning of what I would call my fragrance journey. Uh, I hadn't smelled a whole lot of colognes. I've had some experience with a few here and there that I might call signature scents over the years. So I can't say that I had a purely developed sense of smell uh, to really know if I would appreciate this fragrance or not. But I know that I found it pleasant. At the very least, I didn't find it unpleasant. I'll just say that. So upon smelling it, I hadn't quite decided if I wanted it yet. I literally let maybe a month or two go by watching various reviews uh, from other uh, reviewers online talk about the fragrance, give their perspectives, and I was beginning to see this gradual shift towards people saying, huh, you know, yeah, when I first smelled it, I didn't really like it, but now that I have it and I've been wearing it, I really like it. Because number one, it gets me compliments, and number two, it performs really well. Aren't those the two things we're looking for in a fragrance anyway? It hits both of them. So without further ado, I bring you Dior Sauvage. I picked this up again, maybe about two months ago now. I've used it quite a bit. This is just uh, the regular 60 mil bottle. And if you're not familiar with the bottle, I'll go ahead and show you uh, the presentation really briefly. Here's the box. Very simple box. Dark coloring, it's kind of like a dark blue with some black and white to kind of reflect the uh, vibe of the bottle. If you look closer, you can see there's this ribbing along the sides, which is, you know, just add a little bit of texture to the presentation here. Uh, nothing more to the box, move on to the bottle. Here's the bottle, you have this blue uh, kind of fading into a more transparent uh, hue towards the bottom, which is a real classy, very modern look to it. Magnetic cap, which is awesome. On the inside of the cap, you may not see this, but there's this little B in there. In fact, my light just might be reflecting back into the lens. It might not help. Here's a magnetic cap. has the CD, Christian Dior emblem on the top. Also on the bottom, we have the CD. The, the atomizer on this one, I'm not going to show you now just because it's going to make my whole apartment smell uh, of it. Uh, but this, I mean, all Dior fragrances really, they got it right with the atomizers. It is a mist. It really isn't just a spray. It's a mist. So you can get all you need from one spray, in my opinion, from this fragrance. Now here's what surprised me about Dior Sauvage. I don't know if you saw my top 10 fall fragrance list. If you didn't, should be maybe about here. Go ahead and click on that uh, whenever you'd like. If you want to do it now, feel free. Otherwise, hope you check it out after this video. Uh, Dior Sauvage was on my list, but it was listed as an honorable mention for the fall. Reason being is that I don't really consider it a fall fragrance. It is so versatile. It works in any season. It really does. 
and it does not really embody what the fall means to me in terms of how it makes me feel, in terms of what I like to smell in the fall. However, I've been finding myself reaching for it more than I thought I would. You know, it's a little bit cooler out here in the Midwest now that we're getting into the meat of the fall. And I've been finding myself some days to others kind of not wanting a warm and cozy fragrance for that day. And on those days, I think about, man, I just want something kind of sharp and kind of fresh. I reach for Sauvage. No brainer. The things I love about this fragrance, one of them, the most being the performance. This thing projects like a beast. I can literally put one spray, just one tss, tss, and again, it's a good mist. One spray on my neck, just one, and I will smell it around me for at least eight hours. I will be smelling it. In fact, I sprayed it this morning. This was my scent of the day. I sprayed it. I can still smell it. I mean, right now, what time is it? It is it's five o'clock right now. I sprayed it at 9 a.m. It's 5 p.m. now. It's a solid eight, nine hours, whatever that is. I don't want to do the math right now. Um, and I can still smell it. And if I can still smell it, then other people can probably smell it too. The uh, projection, the sillage, uh, and the longevity are all top marks for me with this fragrance. And not only that, but again, it's a pleasant scent. It's not the most groundbreaking piece of artistry, but I still do believe that this is going to be considered somewhat of a masterpiece. Just give it a little bit of time. You can quote me on that. Uh, this trend happens time and time again with other fragrances. It happened with Blue de Chanel. When Chanel released that, people didn't like it at first and then people kind of went crazy about it for a while. It did kind of tail off a bit, but I do think that the general consensus is that most people enjoy this fragrance more than Blue de Chanel. And I like Blue de Chanel, but this is something I find a little bit more pleasant, more, a little bit more appealing. If you're looking to have people around you enjoy how you smell, no matter what, the scent that you are putting into the air, nobody can dislike this scent, as long as you don't go too much on it. Again, I think one spray will do it, even in the cooler weather. Maybe in the winter, I might go at one and a half to two. You can literally do a half spray with this thing. You just barely press it. <laughs> Little mist. You're gonna please everybody. Now, if you're wondering how Dior Sauvage smells, I assume, obviously, you haven't smelled it yet. Uh, it's kind of your generic cologne smell, but it's very... The quality is very good. It doesn't smell synthetic, to me, honestly. I don't get the smell of alcohol in this fragrance, and that is kind of what defines synthetic to me, where you can really smell the concentration of the alcohol being higher than that of the essential oils in the fragrance. And this fragrance, right off the bat, you're gonna spray it, you're gonna get citrus. That citrus is bergamot. That's gonna be coupled with some black pepper. So from the top, it's this very stinging, citrusy, spicy, peppery blast. That only kind of tones down. But to me, that kind of remains a lot of what we get out of this fragrance throughout the life of it. Now, once it begins to dry down, we get into some floral elements. We get some geranium in there. Uh, we get some lavender, uh, which does kind of help mellow out the heart a little bit. Uh, I think there's even some ginger in there. At the base, we have woodiness. I think there's some cedar down there. Uh, we do get some labdanum, and there's also this ambroxan, which you did, if you didn't know, Ambroxan is a synthetic substitute to something called ambergris, which is a natural occurring uh, material, which I think comes from an animal. I can't remember now. It might be whales or something. I'll look that up. This fragrance remains very much the same throughout its life. From beginning to end, it doesn't really change at all. It's very lineal, uh, which I don't have a problem with. If, I, if I'm going to commit to Dior Sauvage for the day and the way that it smells at the beginning, I know it's going to smell like that at the end. I don't have a problem with consistency. I just wanted to share my thoughts on this fragrance and I wanted to align myself with the side of the tracks that enjoys this. 
and will continue to wear it because it is a good fragrance. Dior knew what they were doing. They were not just mindfully trying to make money. They're making money, trust me. But pick this fragrance up now before it becomes too expensive and too rare to find. Uh, trust me, even if you want a sample of it, wear it, see what people around you think about it. Hopefully that will influence your decision on what you think of this fragrance. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been another Stay Fresh exclusive. If you didn't know, I have a Facebook page now. I also have an Instagram. Links to those will be over here. I don't know which one will be which, but you can figure it out. So please check those pages out. Subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. <laughs> subscribe. 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 This is going to keep you fresh. This will help you stay fresh. That's why I'm here. In the meantime, stay fresh. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.